Hi, I'm Dr. Joni Liu, and I want to share with you my story about why I'm the type of doctor that I am today and why it matters. When I was a little girl, my mother told me uh, some good things. She, she told me what I could not do. She told me that I could not be a teacher or a nurse or a secretary because I would answer to no man. And wow, you know, for a nine-year-old, I didn't quite understand what she was driving at, but I thought, this is great. So that meant that I could do anything that I wanted. Well, by the time I got to 17 and I was very prolific at drawing and artwork, I announced to my mother that I wanted to be a fashion designer. And she said, absolutely not. And that was the moment when I found out that what she wanted for each one of us, my two younger brothers and me, was to go to school, study medicine, become MDs, and go back to China. Well, we were never there. And, um, and practice medicine there. And of course, we were born in Canada, didn't know the language. Anyway, I was really the only one who uh, was good at biology, chemistry, and physics. I mean, my brothers were good at math. Well, okay, math as well, because I really loved my calculus. But, but my brother, my second brother, he tried, but he was a mathematician. So he flunked out of all his, all his uh, science courses. My other brother was a, um, he loved his physics and his chemistry and he became an aeronautics engineer. He just completely ignored my parents' request. But I was really the only one who had a really good chance at doing this. So now I happened to be in pre-med and in pre-engineering because I still kept up my, all my math and my physics because that's what I loved. But as, as I tried to um, enroll or get into med school, I was rejected. But at the same time, I also applied to go into engineering at the other English university in Montreal, which is called Concordia University. Hi, Elise. How are you? Thanks for joining. And so... It's kind of interesting because at the time I had this mentor and he was my brother's best friend's dad. And I really admired this man because he was a brilliant civil engineer and he was a brilliant architect. And and he was European. He loved wine. You know, he's very cosmopolitan and very worldly. And I man, I I thought he was a modern day Renaissance man because he was so well-rounded and I wanted to be like that. So one day we were talking as uh, after I had applied to med school and uh, also engineering and he had told me very point blank without any hesitation whatsoever. He said, well, okay, you could be a doctor, but all you really need is a really good memory and persistence. To be an engineer, you need to understand. And so I remembered it all these years because, my God, so that was in, in the mid-1970s. So it's been almost 50 years, and I still remember what he said to me. So I was accepted into engineering. And I, uh, as soon as I graduated, I went to Calgary, Alberta, and got to work, okay? And it was a great industry. It, it, I made a lot of money. It was pretty lucrative. Um, but eventually, I got really sick. So fast forward 24 years, and I'm in a position in my life where I've got to make decisions about whether I want to live or not. And everything turned out just fine, okay? Because I was looking for meaningful work. And so I looked at my three options that I thought I had. So Western Herbology, 
uh, holistic nutrition and traditional Chinese medicine. And I audited courses at, at the nutritional school and I thought, heck, I could, because of my expertise, my hobby, which was um, attaining good health and fitness, I thought I can teach these courses. So they couldn't teach me anything new. Uh, herbal, Western herbal, herbology was about gardening. I mean, one of the prerequisites, one of the requirements was that you had to have a herbal garden. And I wasn't a gardener, okay, by any stretch of the imagination. So traditional Chinese medicine offered everything that I wanted. Um, it definitely, I could incorporate everything that I already knew okay into my practice and so that gave me the best options and that's what I did so I started my road into studying traditional medicine Chinese medicine and believe me the paradigm is so different and remember I come from a biology physics and chemistry as well as engineering background so so man it was difficult work it was hard work I had to get my mind around this entirely new paradigm of health because it really was about health, okay? It really was about health. And, and so at the beginning of my second year, I told the head of the faculty at the school that I was going to that, you know, it's not enough for me to memorize acupuncture point prescriptions. It's not enough for me to memorize herbal formulas. I really need to understand. And that is, I guess, the engineer in me because I have always been curious. I've always asked questions and I've always been very interested in why things work. So being a doctor of Chinese medicine is no different for me. I'm so... So I have to understand. So in student clinic, it was very interesting because they were teaching us that, you know, you go in and you take your, do your intake and uh, then you figure out what your point prescription is going to be. You leave the room, you know, for them to get undressed. And so you can, and then you go in and you put in the needles and then you leave again. So, you know, so it's supposed to be like 20 minutes. Well, it was only years later when I realized that what they were teaching us was to have a patient every 20 minutes. And as a friend of mine pointed out, oh, you know, they were teaching you how Western medicine does things. But I began to experiment during those, cl those student clinic days. And I decided that I would stick around and actually talk to 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 my clients and you know stay there and chat you know find out what their life is like you know what kind of person they are and really that actually helped my treatments help them a lot more deeper okay because that that um personal that personal contact that personal um knowledge was very important, but really what it came down to was understanding the other person, where they were coming from. So I have designed my practice to spend a lot of time with you, okay? So it's about asking a lot of questions. And even though we are trained to ask questions in Chinese medicine, that is the only testing that we do, we don't need complicated, expensive machines. It's a Q&A that's important. But I've gone much farther than that and asking a lot more deeper questions that give me deeper answers to what is truly ailing you, okay? So because of that, I no longer practice acupuncture I don't need it because really in some cases acupuncture is not appropriate something else needs to be there and so that's why it's so important to to realize that heck you know 
things, you got to go deeper. You got to ask questions. And so I have a system where I'm going a lot deeper and getting really good answers from my clients because everything matters. It all matters. And that really helps me to plan, make a really good plan so that you can be truly helped at a deeper level. And then, you know, you're changing your brain, changing your thinking, and therefore you are changing your brain and changing the rest of your body. And that's why there are side benefits. I mean, this is in total contrast to what happens with an MD. I mean, how well do they really know you? Even at 20 minutes at a time. Most of the time it's 10 minutes. Okay, they really don't know you. They don't know how well you sleep. They don't know, you know, um, what you eat really, you know, in detail. They really don't. They don't ask enough questions. And that is a serious problem in modern medicine because they never dive in deep enough to find out who you really are as a person. And they, and that really is the essence of somebody who's going to help you, guide you back to wellness again. They really need to have that human contact, that human relationship. You got to ask questions. And I ask a lot of questions so that I can understand. And that goes back to what my mentor told me almost 50 years ago, that I needed to understand. So I hope this helped to, to explain to you why I practice the way I do, why I do things the way I do them. Okay, so I want to reassure you in these times that it's a good day to look at every blessing that you have and you write them out and you say them back to yourselves because there's a lot of panic out there. People are doing knee-jerk reactions out there. Our leaders are not responding the way that I feel is responsible out there. And I believe that we are in a great experiment, but we are all going to pull through, okay? You're going to pull through. Don't let the fear of other people affect you. Don't let the fear of other people make you give up. Instead, count your blessings. It's as simple as that. And you can start with, I am so happy and grateful now that dot, dot, dot. And you talk about all the people that you're grateful for. You know, look for um, all the good traits of the people that you love. You know, like the fact that, I mean, way back I told you I had a, a freezer full of food. I wasn't going to starve. And it was a temporary circumstance. This too shall pass. So I know that you are stronger than you think. You are stronger than you think. Until next time, this is Dr. Joni Liu. And if you need my help, yeah, just message me, private message me here. Because you can pull through. Bye.